What is going on people of the Smart Society? Matt here from mksmarts.com and in this video we're going to be going over everything you need to do in order to get your home assistant server up and running. In other words, the complete guide. So what is Home Assistant? Well, Home Assistant is another open source software that can control your home and integrate all the things you have in your home. So instead of you having individual apps for say your Belkin Wemo, your Philips Hue, you just have one centralized server or app that controls everything. Those of you familiar with OpenHab, this is basically another software that does the same thing as OpenHab. Some might say Home Assistant is maybe even better. So in this video, we're going to be taking care of the hardware required for the Home Assistant server. We're going to get Home Assistant running on a Raspberry Pi using HASS.io. We're going to go over some of the Home Assistant UI. We're going to install a tool called the HASS Configurator so we can modify the configuration file online from the web and we don't even need to SSH. We're going to install an MQTT broker so we can connect to MQTT devices and control them. And finally, we're going to add an MQTT device and control it from Home Assistant. In this case, we're going to be using my blinds control device. So that way you can control your blinds from Home Assistant. So the Raspberry Pi and my blinds control device are running custom PCBs. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a green PCB inside here. And so recently I've been getting my PCBs from PCBWay. In fact, I just recently got another set of blinds control PCBs right here from PCBWay. Uh, this was pretty fast. I placed an order and I got it real quick. So what is PCBWay? PCBWay is how you prototype the easy way. Getting a PCB prototype like these is very simple and their website makes it very intuitive. So those of you that have never placed a PCB order before, they will make it easy and they have a helpful chat so you can talk to their one of their live representatives if you don't know what something means on their website. But not only do they have PCB PCB prototype, but they also have SMD stencil and PCB assembly. So they have everything you need regarding PCBs. And right now they're having something called their holiday special. If you haven't watched my videos before, you already missed out on the Halloween special, but don't worry, they have one for Christmas. So check out the link in the description below. They have discounts. Also, if you use the cash code on the screen now, you can get $5 off your order, which means if you only want 10 PCBs, your order is free because for 10 PCBs, it's $5 and the cash code is $5. So five minus five is zero. So check out PCB way in the link in the description below. So what are you going to need to get HASS.io or Home Assistant running? Well, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi or another one of their supported devices, but the Raspberry Pi is the easiest one to use. I recommend getting at least a Raspberry Pi 2, but in this case, I am using a Raspberry Pi 3. I also recommend getting a case for your Raspberry Pi to sort of protect it because this is running your entire home. But I specifically recommend the case that I have on my Raspberry Pi now, and this is a clear case with a fan so that way the raspberry pi stays cooler because the raspberry pi doesn't come with a fan but in this case with this case it's not only clear so you can see the raspberry pi goodness but it also has a nice fan to keep it nice and cool but just having a case with a fan isn't enough i also recommend getting a pair some heat sinks to put on the Raspberry Pi components. So that way it's cooler. I'll show you how to install these later. Also for storage, we're going to need a 32 gigabyte floppy disk. Uh, so this is gonna go inside of the Raspberry Pi. I'm just kidding. We're gonna need a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. And I recommend getting at least a class 10 micro SD card so that way you have fast storage because the higher the class, the faster the storage is. So this one specifically is one from SanDisk, but, and it's 32 gigabytes. Home Assistant recommends you get at least a 32 gigabyte micro SD card. You're also going to need a good power adapter. Uh, so this one that I have here is five volts, 2.5 amps. And I believe this one is from Canakit. I don't remember exactly. Uh, there will be a link in the description to this exact power adapter. But I've been using the same power adapter on my OpenHab server for many, many years, and it's been doing very well. So I recommend this exact one. Then we're gonna need a way to connect the Raspberry Pi to our network. And I recommend using ethernet 
and wired ethernet instead of the built-in Wi-Fi on some of the Raspberry Pis that have Wi-Fi because ethernet is more stable. I personally like to color code the network cables. So for my open app server, I'm also using a green ethernet cable. So I decided to get another green one for this home assistant server. Next, you're going to need a micro SD card reader. So that way you can read the SD card from your computer and write to it because this is how we're gonna write the hash IO onto the micro SD card. And lastly, we're gonna need a computer and this can be either a a Mac computer or a Windows computer. For this guide, it doesn't matter which one because all of the things that we're gonna be doing is cross-platform because we're only going to be using a program called Etcher and we're just gonna be using a web browser. In my case, I'm gonna be using Google Chrome, which is cross-platform. Links to the exact parts and tools I'm using will be in the description below. And I recommend getting the exact ones for the most stable Home Assistant server. One of the biggest things that I recommend is the clear case and the heat sinks, which you can find on my website as a bundle together for a really great price, which is mksmarthouse.com slash shop. Also links in the description, follow mksmarthouse on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat, because that's where I give sneak peeks on future videos, and also where I show you things that only a true smart home enthusiast would enjoy. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is get the case on the Raspberry Pi. Now I've already gotten the case on the Raspberry Pi, but if you want a detailed video of how to put this case together and how to put it on the Raspberry Pi, check out my setting up the home automation server hardware video. I'll leave a link in the description and a card on the screen now. Also, after this video is over, check out my final installation for setting up the home automation server. I will also have a card on the screen at the end of this video and a link in the description below. All right, so now once the case is on, we also want to install these heat sinks. So there are two versions of these heat sinks. You can get silver or black. Honestly, the color doesn't matter. It's just personal preference. I like black, but I find that a lot of people also like silver. All right, so to install the heat sinks, I'm gonna put it this way. It doesn't matter which way you install it. Me personally, I'm just gonna do it this way. And all you do is just remove the plastic backing and just stick it on the black block right here. Oh, it's a little bit crooked. There we go. And then you just press down just a little bit. And then that's it. The heat sink is installed. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for this one. You just simply peel off the back and we wanna do this little square right here. And there we go push down a little bit and it's all done. So now this Raspberry Pi is guaranteed to stay cool and keeping the Raspberry Pi cool is very important so that way it doesn't overheat and so that way it can keep running your home automation server, your Hass IO, so you can always control everything you want. Now we're going to get the Hass IO operating system onto the micro SD card. So what you wanna do is go to the guide for this video, which is in the description below and that'll bring you to this exact page where I have all the commands and steps that we're gonna follow to get this home assistant server up and running. Uh, obviously this video will be replaced with the video you're watching now, but this is just a temporary placeholder. All right, so we wanna go to the software tab and then we want to scroll down to where it says follow instructions from official website. Then we click on it. And so these are the instructions we're gonna be following to get has IO installed. So the first step is you need to choose what model Raspberry Pi you are using. So I am using the model three and so i'm going to use the 32 bit so i'm going to click on that one and it'll start downloading right here all right next we're going to need the program called etcher so just click on this link right here that'll bring us to etcher and it'll automatically detect what operating system you're using so I have Mac OS, but if you click the drop down, you can choose which operating system you're using and then just click the download for whatever operating system you have. And then once it's downloaded, open up Etcher. All right, now we just have to drag it to our application folder. If you're on Windows, I already have the program installed, so I'm just gonna click stop. There's no need to have it twice, but if you're on Windows, you'll have a different setup process, okay? So now I'm going to go to my launch pad and open up Etcher. If you're on Windows, just go to your uh, search menu and then type in Etcher and it'll find the program for you. All right, now we're going to select image. We're gonna to go to our downloads folder and click on the HASIO image. Click open. Now we need to plug in our micro SD card. So take your SD card reader and then take your micro SD card and plug it in. And then after that, plug it into your computer. All right, the SD card is inserted. I do wanna note that it will erase everything off of your SD card. So make sure anything you have important off there is off there. All right, so next we're gonna click select drive and then you can it shows you all the drives attached so mine is a 32 gigabyte uh, you lose a little bit 
due to formatting, so it is the 30.91 gigabytes. Go ahead and click continue, and then finally click flash. Like I mentioned before, this will erase everything off your SD card. Click flash. It will ask for your admin password for your computer, and it is flashing. All right, at your finished flashing, your computer will say this disk uh, was not readable. That's fine. That's because uh, the computer can't understand the format. So just click eject and so etcher says flash complete so you can close out etcher and then now you can disconnect the micro sd card from your computer and now we're going to go ahead and plug everything in and get the raspberry pi all good to go in terms of hardware all right so the first thing we're going to do is take out the micro sd card and put it into the raspberry pi all right the sd card is in right here so we no longer need the reader okay next we're going to take the ethernet cable and connect one end of the ethernet cable into the ethernet port of the raspberry pi and then take the power adapter and plug in one end into the raspberry pi so we got two things that we need to plug into our network well one thing into our network and one into power so let's go do that now all right so here is my network setup uh i apologize for all of the ethernet cables uh we were currently running some wires and so we had to move them all down but the main network setup is still untouched so we just need to tuck these back in over there but anyway so let's go ahead and plug in the server all right so now that we got our server right here we're going to take the ethernet cable i'm going to plug it into my ethernet switch right there plugged in and then I'm going to take the power adapter and plug it in right here and as you can see the Raspberry Pi turns on I'm just gonna tuck it in right here uh, I apologize if it's a little bit loud but we are down here in the server room so like I mentioned I got my open app server right here and my home assistant server right here and yes you can run both of them at the same time on your network all right now let's go ahead and wait 20 minutes for this thing to boot up and get home assistant all set up for us to configure all right it's been about 20 minutes so I think my server is fully set up so now we want to go back to my website and then go back to the uh, Hasio installation guide on the official home assistant website. So there's two ways of accessing your home assistant server. You can either type in the IP address colon 8123 or hasio.local colon 8123. Now for me, this doesn't work, but for you, it may work. See, it just keeps on trying to load and waiting. Uh, it may be because I have two home assistant servers and I disconnected the first one, but anyway, so there's two ways. You can either do this way or it's IP address. But for the sake of this video, the IP address always works. So to find the IP address, you want to log onto your router and see all the connected devices. So to see what your router's IP address is, you go to system preferences and then network. Uh, if you're on Windows, you go to command prompt and type in IP config and you want to look for your router IP address and then you want to type it in. It'll ask for a username and password. If you've never accessed this before, it would be on the back of your router, but I have, so I changed it. And then you want to go to DHCP and then client list. Every router is different. Going to extend this. And so we are looking for HASIO. All right, there's one of my HASIO servers. And there is the other right here. All right, so since we're already in here, what you would ideally wanna do is give your home assistant server a static IP address. What a static IP address is, is an IP address that is always attached to that device. So in this case, this Raspberry Pi that this HASIO server is using, I already gave its MAC address the IP address of 192.168.0.5. I'll insert a clip now of how I did this to my open app server so you can do the same. Go to DHCP and DHCP client list. Then look through the list and find open Habian Pi. Copy its MAC address and head over to address reservation. Click add new and in the MAC address field, paste the Pi's MAC address. There's one more field to fill out and that is the IP address. I put 192.168.0.4 because that is the next available static IP address I have. Click save and in the pop-up box, click OK. There will be a little warning saying that it needs to reboot, so click on the thing that says click here and press the reboot button. When the box pops up, click OK. Let the router restart and when it finishes, unplug the Raspberry Pi, wait 10 seconds, and then plug it back in. Wait one minute for the Raspberry Pi to boot back up. So now that we have the IP address, you just want to copy it, go to your web browser, open a new page, do colon 8123 and click enter. And it launches the home assistant configuration. So the first thing you want to do is create a username account. 
So I'm going to call this account admin and the username is going to be admin and then I'm going to give it a password and then you want to click create account. All right, now it's going to ask you to log in with those credentials and the goal of Home Assistant is to keep everything local. So those credentials that you just entered are stored locally. They don't go to a cloud. So I'm going to log in with the user we just created. And there we go. Home Assistant is complete and you can save this login if you want for this device. So I'm gonna click save login for the sake of it. And then that's it, Home Assistant is complete. It's installed and running on your server. All right, but now let's go through the Home Assistant interface and let me tell you a little bit of things about it. So up here you have the things that automatically discovered and then here's more things that I automatically discovered. See, I already found my Belkin light switches and then they have some welcome information. If you click on the three lines in the top left, it brings up a menu. Here is a map, so if you have a layout plan of your house, it shows you where all the devices are. Here you have a logbook, which shows all the logs of the server. Then you have history, which shows you the uh, statuses of the device over time. So say for example, it'll show you when, at what points in the day you turn on the light switch, at what points you turn it off. See, for example, the Belkin light switches, it's says that it's been off for this long and same thing with the other one. And so it just gives you some nice statistics, which is really cool because this is all out of the box. We didn't even touch the server yet and or configure anything. We literally just installed it and created a user account. And then next we have HASS.io. So this is where we can add add-ons and different apps that Home Assistant has. For example, in this video, we're gonna add, what are we gonna add? We're gonna add the Hass configurator and we're going to add the MQTT broker. But so the first one is dashboard and this will show you all the add-ons you have installed. Then you have snapshots. So this is where you can create backups of your server, which is pretty cool because this is all out of the box. That's what blows my mind. In OpenHab, you would have to do a bunch of command line tools, plug in a flash drive and a bunch of stuff. And here it's all built in and it has a nice user interface. Then here you have the add-on store right now out of the box. It has the official Home Assistant add-ons. So these are all official add-ons by Home Assistant. And if you want, you can add another uh, repository from different people and unofficial add-ons. And then we have system. So this shows you some system logs. And from here you can reboot, shut down, import from USB. You can change the host name. And then the next one is configuration. So this is where you can do the Home Assistant Cloud. I'll make a video in the future on the Home Assistant Cloud. You have integrations. So this shows you stuff that you can configure. This is all built in out of the box. And these are things that it automatically discovered. And here you would show up things that are automatically, or show things that you have configured. And then here you can manage users. So you can add users for different people in the house and so that you can show if they're home or away. And in the future, Home Assistant plans that uh, different users will be able to have different sitemaps or different things that they can see and give them restrictions. Next, we have the general. So this is really cool. I like this. Um, what this is, is a configuration validation. So when you modify the configuration.yaml file, which is the main file of where you add the devices, if you click check config, it'll make sure that the syntax is correct and it won't crash your entire server. So every time you modify the configuration.yaml, remember to go here and click check config. And then here you can reload all the different parts of Home Assistant. So you can reload the core, groups, automations, and scripts. We'll be covering those in future videos. And then from here, you can restart the entire Raspberry Pi or you can turn off the Raspberry Pi as a whole. And then here you have some developer tools. Uh, we won't go into detail, but here I'll just click through them. And then finally you have your home assistant, what it is and the version. All right, so now that you have your home assistant server up and ready, you're gonna need some devices to connect to it. And over at mksmarts.com shop, I have a bunch of different products that are compatible with Home Assistant once you finish this video because all of the devices on my shop are MQTT enabled. So that means they connect through MQTT. So on my website, I have LED strips, blinds controls, sprinkler systems, door sensors, fire sensors, 
and we're gonna be adding more and more as the months go on. And if you sign up for the email list, you can get 5% off of your order. In this video, we're also gonna be covering how to add the blinds control device at the end. So head on over to mksmarts.com slash shop and pick up a device now. So in this video, I briefly mentioned about the configuration.yaml file. So let's go ahead and install Hass Configurator, which is a web user interface way to edit that configuration.yaml file. So you want to go to Hass.io and then go to the add-on store and we want to look for Hass Configurator. There it is, the configurator and then just click install. If you want more information about it, just click this link right here. That's one thing that's really cool about Home Assistant. You just click install and it installs the add-on and configures it for you. There is just one thing that we do need to change. All right, it looks like the configurator is all installed. So let's go through it. So the first thing is start on boot. Yes, we want to do that. Uh, next is auto update. So this is whether the uh, add-on automatically updates itself when there is a new version. I'm going to enable that just because I don't want to keep on clicking the update button. Yes, it is easy in Home Assistant, but why not have it do it by itself? All right, and then here you have the uninstall. So if you want to remove this, you just click this and then click the start button and it'll start. But so before we click the start button, we need to give the configurator a password. So what this means is when you go to the configurator page, it'll ask you for a username and password. And so we need to define those. So I'm going to keep the username as admin and then I'm going to make the password also admin. And so you wanna put quotation marks and then your password that you wanna use inside the quotation marks. Once you've done that, click save. Once you click the save button, then click start and it'll start the configurator. And it has started because you can see the green circle at the top. And from here you can restart it and you can stop it. But we wanna click open web UI because that'll take us to the configurator. And so now we're gonna use the username and password that we defined in that file. I don't want to save the password. All right, so this is the Hass configurator. This is where we can modify all of the files that are related to Hass.io or in Home Assistant. And to see the files, you just click on this folder in the top left, and this brings all the files. But this is the most important file. This is the configuration.yaml file. And this is where we're gonna add all of our MQTT devices, which speaking of, we need to install the MQTT broker. To install the MQTT broker, we need to go back to our home assistant and we wanna go back to Hass.io or Hass.io, go back to the add-on store and search for MQTT. There we go, mosquito broker. So click on it and click install. All right, it installed and just like the Hass configurator, I want it to start on boot and I actually want it to auto update and then we have the uninstall button and the start button and here is our config. For this one, I'm going to go to the broker page just so I can show you a couple things. So the first thing is logins. As you can see in the one that we have now, there are no logins. If you want a username and password to connect to the MQTT server, you want to insert this in between these brackets right here. And then you can just change the username and password. But for me personally, I don't really, I don't see any benefit to securing MQTT since it's all on the internal network of my house. So I'm going to change this anonymous to true. So that way I say that I don't require a login to access the MQTT server and then click save. And then this other stuff, I don't really worry about it at all. The biggest thing that you need to know is the logins and the anonymous. So then click save. Once that's all saved, this is leave the default ports as they are and then just click start. All right, so the mosquito broker is installed and the IP address for the uh, mosquito broker is the same one as your home assistant server or Hassio server. In my case, the MQTT server is 192.168.0.5. So when I'm setting up my devices, I want to make sure that I include this IP address. Now that the mosquito broker is installed, we need to add it to our configuration file. So that way it knows that any MQTT device that we add, we want it to use this MQTT broker. So we wanna go back to my website and copy this piece of code right here. Then we wanna to go to our configuration.yaml file. And then I like to put it underneath discovery, click enter two times, and then command V or control V or paste it in. And then you wanna change the IP address of server to the IP address of your uh, home assistant server. So mine is 192.168. Dot zero dot 
and then you want to click the save button up here and actually this is a perfect time to show you how to check the configuration.yaml file so go back to your home assistant uh, main page and you want to go to configuration you want to go to general and click check config and it tells us that our file is good to go so good practice is that every time that you change the configuration.yaml file you go over to server management and you click restart it'll restart your home assistant server and make update the configuration.yaml file that the server is using if you're a smart home enthusiast like me then check out smarthousesociety.com smarthousesociety.com is a website that i created that has clothing that true smart home enthusiasts would appreciate because it shows that you like smart homes and you're part of the society that loves smart homes too. Which if you're installing Home Assistant, that means you're a smart home enthusiast, which means you are part of the smart house society. And I have versions of the clothing that say elite member on the back to show that you are an elite member of the smart society. There are different things of clothing you can get on the store. You can get hoodies, t-shirts, polos, hats, snapbacks, all on smarthousesociety.com. And if you use the promo code ELITE, you can get 15% off of your order. So check out smarthousesociety.com because if you're a smart home enthusiast, that's where you belong. Now that we have Home Assistant fully configured with MQTT and Hask Configurator, it's, it's time to add the blinds control so that way we can control our blinds from Home Assistant. So the first thing I'm going to do is just plug it into the wall and make sure the jumper pin is overrun. Then I'm going to grab my phone, go to Wi-Fi and click on MK blinds control. Then I'm going to click configure Wi-Fi. If you guys want a more detailed way on how to set up the blinds control device, then check out this video right here in this card where it'll take you to the firmware version 2 where I show you how to connect it to OpenHab where it's the same thing except for the changes that I'm going to mention in this video and the IP address. But in this video I'm going to scroll through and show you the settings that I've put into this blinds control. So the first thing is I selected my Wi-Fi network, gave it its password, then I told it the host name is mk-blindscontrol1 because it's the first blinds control device, then for MQTT I said that the IP address is 192.168.0.5 because that's the IP address of Home Assistant. Then I gave it this topic right here, mk-smarthouse slash utilities slash mk-blindscontrol1. And then false because I didn't declare authentication. If you have authentication and you put in a username and password in the MQTT Mosquito uh, add-on, then you would change this false to true and type in the username and password that you typed into the mosquito uh, configuration. Next is web updater. This is how we will access the uh, update page as well as the portal page for the device. And then uh, I don't want these blinds to move slowly. I want them to be fast. So I put that to false, but if you want them to move slowly and quiet, change the false to true. All right, now I'm going to click save. And if everything connects correctly, then this page should disappear. And there we go. It disappeared. So it connected successfully. Now let's add it in home assistant. All right, to add it to home assistant, we simply go to my website, copy this piece of code right here. Then we want to go to Home Assistant, Hass.io, we want to go to the configurator, open the web UI, and then we want to be in the, go to the folder, and then go to the configuration.yaml file. And then scroll all the way down to the bottom and paste in the code that we copied from my website. So let me go over what this is. This is a cover item type. It uses the platform MQTT. We're going to give it the name MK Blinds. Then for the command topic, the command topic is what sends to the device. And then the state topic is what Home Assistant receives from the device because the device is two-way communication. So when Home Assistant sends a command, if the device executed the command, then the device will send a command back to Home Assistant, letting it know that it was successful. So then we have retain true because I want it to retain the state even when it does a power cycle. And then payload open. So that means it'll send zero when we click open in Home Assistant. And then for close, it'll send a hundred. So to the MQTT topic, to open the device, it'll send a zero to this topic. And when we want it to close, it'll send a zero to this topic. And then also when a home assistant sends the command stop, it'll send the number 56 because that's about halfway on the blinds control. So again, it sends all of these to the command topic. And then for the states, if, if it receives a zero from this state command, then it'll show open in home assistant and when it receives 100 from this state topic, 
then it'll show closed. All right, now we're gonna click the save button. Then we're gonna go over to our Home Assistant main page, go to configuration, go to general, check the config, configuration is valid, and then just restart the Home Assistant server. All right, now that the server is restarted, I'm gonna to go to overview, and then we can see the cover item for the MK blinds. And so if I click the up arrow, as you can see, the blinds control servo move. And if I click the down arrow, it also moved. And then obviously if we click the uh, square, it'll go to the half position. Fantastic. So now the blinds control device is successfully connected to Home Assistant. If you want more information on the blinds control device, or if you wanna see it actually in action in a blinds, then check out my channel where I have videos on it. I'll leave a link in the description below. So what does this mean for my channel? Well, it means that in future videos, I will be showing how to connect devices to both OpenHab and Home Assistant, and I'll be showing add-ons and bindings for both OpenHab and Home Assistant. And then eventually one day I will make a video comparing Home Assistant and OpenHab so you can decide which one is better for you. All right, that concludes this complete guide to installing Home Assistant. In the description, you'll find links to all the parts and devices used in the video, as well as a link to mksmarts.com shop, where I have a wide range of smart home kits that you can put together. All right, if you found this video helpful, click that like button. And if you're a smart home enthusiast, which if you watched how to install Home Assistant, you are, then you belong on this channel. So hit that subscribe button. Also a reason to hit that subscribe button is I'll be doing more videos on Home Assistant and OpenHab. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or join the community over at mksmarts.com forum. Goodbye.